everyone, and welcome back to another episode of To Whom It May Concern. I'm your host, Malak, here with my co-host, Maryam Khawailan Inara. Hey, Salaam So we've all come to a point in our lives where we have had rejection. So whether it may be in work, in school, in relationships, whatever it may be, we have had some type of rejection. Rejection is something that definitely hurts. And we do experience often, and I think some of it are like small things, such as somebody not liking your post, or like <laughs> bigger rejections, such as not getting into a certain career that you've worked so hard. I feel like rejection hurts a lot because it hurts who we are. So whenever we get rejected, we're like, oh, it's because I wasn't good enough. It's because I got rejected from the school I wanted to go into because I didn't qualify for it. Or I got rejected from that person because I didn't have X, Y, and Z. So we start bashing ourselves ourselves for that rejection. And it definitely has a greater impact when you know you put effort into it. When you know you actually went above and beyond and you get rejected, then it's more like, really, like, even my best wasn't good enough. That sounds so sad. (laughs) That sounds so sad. Yeah, and do you continue to try? So, like, let's say I'm going into a certain career path. You constantly have been failing. Is there a point where you give up or do you constantly keep going? You know, I always think Islamically and you're naseeb and you kind of, like, have to take it. You know what I'm saying? Like when you try so hard and something doesn't succeed, like maybe it wasn't meant for you. I've always had that question where like, at what point do I decide or at what point am I supposed to be comfortable in saying like, oh, it wasn't meant for me. Like I always go back to thinking, oh, maybe I could have put more time. Maybe I could have done this. Maybe I could have mm-hmm. done this. But in reality, when do you reach that point where it's like, maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't have it written for me. But that's that's the funny thing because no one ever will know that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, you don't. Could, you could look at it, oh, wow, she's so persistent. She's a go-getter. Yeah, she's determined. Keep going. Yeah. Or you could look at like, it, dude, dead, like, God it's telling, not meant to telling me, you, yeah. yeah, take another route. Or how know? many more ways does it have to be shown to you, like, pick something different? Yeah. For example, I have this friend, and she wants to get into medical school. And she's been trying and trying, and she just can't do well on the MCAT. But she works so hard, she's so persistent. And the first time she applied to medical schools and didn't get accepted, we were like, yes, go try again. Like, it happens. It happens to a lot of people. They bounce back. There's other ways. And she applied again, a second round. Still didn't get accepted. And she was like, but I really, really want to do this. We're like, okay, keep going. Like, you got this. And then the third round, she still didn't get accepted. And at this point, you're just like, and she still was like, no, I'm going to do this anyway. I'm going to keep trying. She tried every different means and every way that she can to study for her MCAT, she got her master's. Like, yeah. At it's what like at point, point did it's like, like you need to reconsider what you want if it's or dream, what you're doing? If it's their dream, I would constantly motivate them to continue and try to achieve it, no matter what. Like, I would be that support. But do you think, like, after the third time and after all these years, like, I, would it be smart for her to continue to do the same thing? I think it depends on what she's doing. Like, is she doing the same thing over and over again? Or is she tweaking it? Like, No, she, is she does. She tweaks it. She went and got her master. She tweaked the way she studied for the MCAT. She tried classes. She tried everything. It's just not working for her. Or maybe this is God's way of telling you, like, this isn't what you're supposed or to be doing. Or just move on. Like, moving on to but something never, might, that might be better for her. It's so hard to tell that person that because you never want to make it seem like, oh, I don't believe in you. Or, you know, like, you can't do it. So I see where you're coming from that it's hard to kind of be like, enough you know choose something else or what's your plan b or where do you go from here an answer could be after you've tried your absolute hardest and your absolute best and it's still not working for you maybe that's a time to choose something different i agree but that but how do you know you've done everything i was gonna say you always hear about those stories or those people that they tried a thousand times Mm -hmm. and it failed but that thousand and one time it succeeded Mm -hmm. So it's like Thomas Edison, he tried 10,000 ways to try to get the light bulb to work. And technically we'd be like, oh, those were failures, you should have given up. But he thought about it as 10,000 ways that you can't start up a light bulb. So like it's not that it was a failure, just, oh, I figured out how not to do it. Exactly. Uh, Yeah, and you always hear like, Jordan, oh, I missed 9,000 shots in my career. Oh, I missed, you know, like, did he ever stop? No, and he'll go down as the greatest basketball player. I don't know. I'll never be able to answer that question. And that's why I'm saying I always ask that question. But I never know where it's that point where I'm like, okay, maybe this is nasib. Maybe I need to have like more tawakkul and kind of like Mm -hmm. let it go. Yeah. And ultimately, I don't think it should come from any other person other than yourself. Mm. Like you have to think about it and kind of like go through the pros and cons of you continuing or just taking the rejection and like going another path. 
No, but the reason why I mentioned this story is because she asked me, she's like, should I just give up? Should I just, mm-hmm. you know, what do you think I should do? And I'm like, keep going. <laughs> keep you said keep going. Yeah, I said keep well, going. You want to know why? But I said this because I was looking at her whole life. And I said, while you're doing this, you still have a good job that's sustaining you at the moment. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's not like, oh, so she's yeah, not you being... don't have a career. So keep studying. If maybe one day you'll study so hard, maybe you'll just guess all over the MCAT and end up with an amazing score. You don't know. But I think as long as you look at the totality of everything and you're okay in your life, and that is a privilege to say because maybe your dreams, like there's a point where your dreams is at risk of the job that you have or that you have to quit your job in order to pursue them. That's when I think it comes to how much rejection is enough rejection. Like what, for actors that go out to Hollywood and don't get like a single role and end up in their cars, it works when it works for somebody. It's so beautiful to see the people that end up succeeding. But how many people end up not succeeding and end up failing and getting rejected? Yeah, like you hear the success stories like, oh, I did this, this, and that. I was mm-hmm. homeless for a time in this, and now I'm a billionaire. But all the people that were homeless and stayed homeless, you don't hear their stories. So it's like you don't want to give immature or bad advice to others because you don't know how it's going to end. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like you just play it. I guess, with the, the best information that you have at the time. And I like what you said, Hoyt. I feel like that's a decision that, as a friend, you cannot make for the individual, mm-hmm. and you, you're there for, you support the decision that they end up making. Honestly, I don't even think as a friend. I think, in general, people could give their advice. But like Hoyla said, it shouldn't, it can't really come from anybody else because you'll never be satisfied with it. Yeah, you'll answer. never be happy uh-huh. unless, it, unless you yourself have come to that conclusion mm-hmm. and, and agree with it. So we talked kind of, we're talking about more rejection from like work and school. But how about when you're rejected emotionally? Like in a relationship? Yeah. How's that? How do you bounce back from that? With When it comes to like a relationship, I feel like you start to blame yourself. Like, what did I do? What about me? I mean, it's the same thing with any rejection. I think it's just more personal now. Yeah, because it's about your personality. It's not like your resume. It's not your resume or your CV. Yeah. Like, it's easier to get rejected because, rejected because like, okay, here's my resume. These are the things I did, and I didn't get accepted to a job. Like, yeah, that hurts. But I feel like when in a relationship, it's literally you as a person that's getting, yeah, like, getting rejected. rejected. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a lot deeper. I think, I don't know, that's hard. You just, it's definitely harder depending on how long you were in the relationship for. So mm-hmm. if you had, had invested a lot more emotion, time, energy, and then it didn't work out, or, like, that person ended up changing their mind or whatever ended up happening it becomes harder even talking about it in this now is like hard to like it's hard to like put it together yeah. like to put yourself in that situation i mean no one wants to talk about okay i got rejected i went home yeah, it's i like ate a, a pint of ice cream i <laughs> cried over like sad music i made a list of all the reasons that the oh, other sh- person stinks for <laughs> like i guess it, it hurts because it's such a aim at your pride and your no ego. and also when you're it's talking mean. emotions you're talking about like vulnerability yeah. like you, know you were open saying? with this person you gave all that you could to them and they didn't reciprocate want you. like they didn't like you they want you out of their lives like that hurts okay mm-hmm. well that's very out of their life it's so <laughs> dramatic no but i mean i get well if you had an ex you want to see them 24 7 probably and it's not, not, necessarily, no, it's not, not that. necessarily just relationships like love relationships it could also be in friendships yeah it could and be in like, friendships. you know what i'm saying just that you put time and effort in something and then they decided it feels like they decided you weren't good enough. For them to keep putting effort into whatever relationship that you guys have. Yeah, so what advice would you guys give for somebody that's currently in that situation? Number one, do not blame yourself. It goes back to the whole, like, tawakkal ala Allah. Like, place your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had put me in the situation because he knows what's best for me. Like, he, the reason why this relationship didn't work is because maybe down the line this would have happened. Or that friendship would have ended, she would have influenced me to do bad. I think you just mm-hmm. blaming things on external factors, do not blame yourself and who you are. Do not ruin your self-esteem and do not continue to criticize yourself. So it's, it's healthier to just blame mm-hmm. all outside factors. Unless you're the issue, then what do you do? Don't. You don't <laughs> I'm messing, I'm messing. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's funny because in Surah Al-Kahif, Khadr and Musa, part of the story, mm-hmm. where it's like, oh, why did you do this? Why did you do that? How can Because oh, yeah. it seems so bad at the time, but in retrospect, it's like that, that prevented so much worse from happening in the future. So and it's funny because we're supposed to be reading that weekly as a reminder for us continue to think that way um but again harder it's so much easier said than done it's hard to do with the time when you're when you have all this emotion bottled up 
my advice is find a way to healthily express that emotion because you are going to feel it. Okay, rejection is rejection. You're going to feel that hurt and that At sadness that comes to it. one point in your life, it. yeah. Yeah, but finding a healthy way to cope with it and then get past it. So, for example, I've mentioned time and time again, for me, that's expressing my emotions through writing or reading. That's how I express it in a healthy way. Some people could choose exercise but as long as it's you're figuring while you're figuring it out you're not doing things like hurting yourself or negative self-talk so finding a healthy way to cope with the emotions and knowing that those emotions are normal and i think a really good um like habit you could get into is kind of trying to find the silver lining in it too like oh while i was trying to apply for this job or something i gained all this experience i made all these new relationships Mm -hmm. kind of just trying to point out the good that you at least got out of it can put it in a better perspective it's like putting a positive spin on it yeah which you know i mean you know you still got rejected from it but at least it's like oh look what i gained even though I lost something. I would also avoid ruminating and constantly like thinking back over what could have, mm-hmm. what could have I done differently? How is it my fault? Like constantly thinking about it will only make you more depressed. By doing that, you'll bounce back quicker by avoiding constantly thinking about it. I know. I remember my friend was saying she was traveling with a coworker of hers, and she said her coworker would just constantly talk about her boyfriend. Like they were out for two weeks, and she's just like the only conversation she wanted to talk about was her ex boyfriend. Oh, her and, ex. Yeah, her ex boyfriend, and she's just like, "Can we move on and talk about?" So something she's else? clearly not. And over I feel it. like that girl just constantly harming herself. Yeah, yeah by talking about it like oh, for two Bringing weeks, it like back come up. on, yeah, and it's like they've been over. She's like, "Come on, move on." Or maybe like following what he's doing and like constantly like yeah. checking yeah i i do think that could be detrimental i think especially when it comes to relationships a lot of times we identify with that person so that's why it makes it so much harder to move on if you don't have like your sense of self in your own identity and mm-hmm. when your identity is kind of embedded with the other person it becomes harder to move on and they in that relationship that person makes you feel special like i want you yeah i mean it started off that way anyway yeah mm-hmm. and you so create like, that attention yeah that yeah. attention that like oh you're the person i think about and then once yeah. that, that's gone it's like oh i don't now receive what? that affection or that yeah so i think rejection in general is inevitable you know you're not going to be successful yeah. at everything especially the first time around you just kind of have to find a way like your own way that you're comfortable to help you bounce back get back up you know when they say like you fall down you get back up and you keep mm-hmm. going so is that what you do like what what do you do when you get rejected for something to bounce back i personally psych myself out i'm like oh it's okay <laughs> you keep telling yourself it's okay till it's actually okay yeah no i if i like fail at something or let's say i don't get accepted somewhere or something i freak out it, it, like in that moment i'll i'll be in my head like, oh my God, you yeah. should have done this. Oh my God, you should have done this. Oh my God, you could have done this. Oh my. For like a solid, I would say a few days. And then I'll kind of get to the point where it's like, okay, well, I can't do anything about it now. What can I do from here on out to try to make it better or something? So then you'll try to use it as a like a learning experience. Yeah. If you stopped in general every time you got rejected, you'd probably not accomplish 95% anything. of the things you do. Yeah. So that's my thing. I kind of... I let myself feel the emotions. So I recently read this somewhere and I loved it. I'm not a ray of sunshine and that's okay. Like I let myself feel those emotions for like two or three days. I let myself feel anger and sadness and I'll write about it and I'll read sad stories about other people who also, you know, have felt <laughs> rejection. And I'll let myself experience that but then after maybe like one or two days or three days, I'm like, okay, that's it. Now get your medium back on. You have other things you need to work need to on do. and accomplish in your life. Yeah, for me, I feel like I turned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, has always taken care of me. And whatever, I, I remember all the struggles that I've encountered and faced or all the rejections that I've uh, had experienced and how that was only a means for me to do better like th- that those rejections have only improved my life even though at that moment it was tough it was difficult but i was like Allah pantala sees the bigger picture he's taking care of me so i feel like i turned to Allah pantala for comfort and trust yeah and when one door closes another five can open up mm-hmm. i actually think that we were having a different type of conversation the other day and i think koala gave some pretty good advice Oh, thank I you. don't know if you want to. I'm, I'm so good with <laughs> advice, you know. No, I really do. My think 25 years of experience. <laughs> All I 25 think, of them. No, I think you did put things more into perspective, Are and you, I think you should share it with everyone. One coping mechanism that I use kind of throughout my life, like from high school to undergrad, med school, and so on, is anytime I would deal with some sort of struggle, is I would always kind of take a step back and look at what 
I guess our purpose in life is. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I would constantly tell me, okay, what's the purpose in life? Worship Allah, be a good Muslim, be a good person. At least for me, that's what I would think. Yeah. So when it's like, oh, if I failed the test or I got rejected in this or this, who cares? Like, again, I would psych myself out and be like, it doesn't even matter because in the long scheme of things, this is not defining who I am as a person. It's not going to prevent me from going into heaven, inshallah. You know what I mean? Because that's the ultimate goal. And I think that was, for me at least, I think that was like really big advice. Because usually when you fail at something, you're, like I said, I get in my head. So it's usually like, I could have done so things so much better. And we have a tendency of thinking, this is our defining moment. If I don't get accepted to a school or I don't do good on an exam, like you said, or I fail the class, for you, it's like this will be forever the one thing that I go down with. Mm. So it's so quick and it's so easy for us to define ourselves by our failures. And we forget not only like all the successes that we've had, but like you said, in the greater scheme of things, like doing good, which you should obviously always try to succeed, but doing good in an undergrad class isn't the thing that you're going to be known for or isn't mm-hmm. going to be the thing that. In the end game, inshallah, in the afterlife, it's not going to be the thing that keeps you out of heaven, you know? Yeah, exactly. And I feel like when you have that Islamic purpose in life, like you know that's the reason why Mm -hmm. you're here, and you make that your priority, everything else just seems Mm -hmm. a little less. It's like minuscule, Difficult to like, yeah. yeah. A lot of times, like religious people and religion in general is used to kind of improve our mood, our outlook on life, and to give like give us a positive spin on things. Yeah, I think Islam does a really good job at this. Because one, it's like, uh, when you mentioned, like the Quran does teach us, you may not understand what's happening, but it's mm-hmm. only for a good reason, for a good cause. Which is my favorite ayah, by the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, we also have a lot of like lectures um, in medicine with like burnout and stress and there's a few things that you can do to prevent burnout or to help you cope with stress and one of them is meditation slash like prayer. Mm-hmm. So it's definitely a mechanism to help help you with a stressful time or pre- even preventing it in itself. Because I feel like you realize your limitations mm-hmm. and when you have a higher power, it's easier to like give to that to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Yeah, to like kind of like give. To let it go, to know that it's not in your hands. Or to so. be willing to take that back seat. Like, mm-hmm. I did what I could, and then the rest is in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's hands. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know, like, you're okay with giving up that pressure. But that's only if you did what you could. So, like, I oh, know yeah, you, you guys were saying earlier, it's so much harder when you put in all your effort yeah, yeah. and you get rejected. Yeah. But if you have that outlook, like, okay, I did everything I could and it's still not happening, so then maybe it wasn't meant to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Having a underpinning of religion to your whole life puts your life into perspective Mm -hmm. so although it may feel detrimental at the time like life will go on you will continue to be able to do what you can i also think islamically we know that life isn't supposed to be all of this like rainbow and like happy like he's gonna touch you test you with your children with your money with your health so we're we're expecting some sort of difficulty in life we're not painting this pretty picture and you always hear that that quote like god tests his strongest soldiers Mm -hmm. you're gonna experience hardship nobody lives life and doesn't experience tragedy or hardship or you know, I, always, like, I always found it interesting how people are like, oh, like atheists, if God exists, why is there so much bad in the world? It's like, God never said there wasn't going to be any bad. <laughs> and I feel like that's difficult to think if you don't believe in an afterlife, if you don't mm-hmm. think justice will take place. Exactly. And the thing is, we're not only, like, for us in Islam, of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't just say, oh, I'm going to test you guys and you regular individuals, you regular believers are going to suffer. We see it through the lives of the Prophet too. Mm-hmm. Rejection was so prevalent with them, regardless of what they were trying to do. When they were trying to set, spread the message, you know, like gain believers, when they were trying to come out with their ayat, we saw like the Prophet wasalam, got rejected so much in his lifetime. And this is someone that's beloved in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the highest level. It kind of segueing into how we're viewed right now society that muslims are being heavily rejected because of their religion and we're not just seeing this on a small scale we're seeing it on a massive scale like looking at our representatives that are muslim and we're told to go back home send her back back. 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 yeah she's targeted just for the fact that she's muslim yeah and in, in general when you're in like when you're a minority in a majority different society of what you are it's going to be more difficult to represent who you are and be accepted and it depends on the circles that you're in i'm sure trump was speaking at a majority white republican racist crowd clearly versus like if you're going to a kind of a space that has 
that's more accepting and open of others, then you can feel you have that comfort to not yeah, be rejected I, for who you are. Like the negative words, I know for me at least this is true. Like I didn't see a thousand comments that are good, but if I get like one or two that are bad, you just like dwell on those. Yeah, like that rejection of you didn't like even my argument or what I had to say or who I am as a person, for example, and Hen Alma, who she represents and she represents us. Like, just the fact that sent her back had nothing to do with any of... Her. Like, her policies. Yeah, what? it was they rejecting her as a person, and they wanted her to go back to... She's from Minnesota, but, like, whatever. But well, I mean, she was born and raised... Or born in Somalia, but... Yeah, but in general. Yeah, yeah. But she's, like, an exemplary example <laughs> of, like, bouncing back when someone hits you hard. You know, like, she takes people's rejection, and she just comes back harder, and that's Stronger. why they can't she uses it to, her. She exactly. uses it to strengthen herself and her own beliefs exactly and uh, i also think there are certain things that when we get rejected we can't let us affect it too like mariam was saying if you're getting i know you can't help but dwell on negative things but if you're getting like a thousand positive comments versus the two i think we need to sometimes brush things off too not have every little thing affect yeah exactly or not expect for everything to come so easily to you and i think it's important that we see like in our representatives at han omar that we take what we get, the rejection, and we bounce back even harder. Yeah, that's definitely what we need to start doing. When we experience rejection, it's about how do we grow in our character and how we could make a positive difference. But I feel like it just depends on what you're going for, though, and what you're rejected in. Some things you can't really like, afford to develop. Yeah, like, yeah. you can't create a bill like in Hen Omar, you know? Yeah. So it just depends on what it is. But it is about like improving your character and how you overcome it and deal with it. I only think because she's a good example because she takes the negative criticism that she gets and the negativity and the media that's shown on her for her rejection and instead she uses that, like instead of her response, it's a platform to push all the good things that she is vocal Mm -hmm. about. So maybe we can take whatever rejection we get. For example, maybe a coworker at work treats you a certain way because they don't like the fact that you're Muslim and push our positive platform and our positivity and have a discussion, an open discussion with them yeah. and get them and to then, And then enlighten change. them about who you are as a person, what Islam's about, or just any other aspect in your life. So rejection in itself, people are embarrassed about it, right? No one ever wants to talk about it. And so if you can prevent it, people would try to prevent it. So it's like, do you think the fear of getting rejected prevents people from pushing forward or trying new things or applying for things that kind of seem out of their scope? Yeah, there's a quote that says, doubt will kill more dreams than failure ever will. And that's true because we're all afraid of putting ourselves out there to people or saying what our real dreams are and then getting rejected or failing that we close our own doors. Right, so sometimes the fear of rejection makes us not go after the things that we want. Isn't that kind of like you rejecting yourself, though? Or rejecting your <laughs> aspirations? No, yeah. it's you. I feel like it's holding a form yourself of, back. Yeah, you're holding yourself back. It's a form of self-defense, in a way. Yeah, I think I also think it's the idea that you don't want to put in so much hard work and it fail, also. Maybe. I'm not talking about just, like, you being lazy and not putting that effort in. I'm talking about, like, oh, I don't think I'll make it. Or like, you I'll, psych yourself out. Yeah, so, like, I'm not even going to apply because I don't want to get the rejection. Sometimes we tend to not push ourselves further because when we were growing up, we had experienced some sort of, like, failure and rejection mm-hmm. that, that had negatively impacted us. Yeah. And we didn't know how to positively, like, cope and overcome it that any sort of thing that is similar to that situation, mm. you tend to avoid. Mm. So sometimes we need to think back and yeah, like what stemmed it? Yeah, like what stemmed it. I know people who are more pessimistic, that that's their thinking style, and so they will not push forward. Mm. Opposed to somebody who's more optimistic, they'll continuously go. So sometimes it's going back to how do we perceive life? Literally, a lot of things are based off of how we perceive life. Yeah, it's so all your... Th- if you're negative and more pe- pessimistic, you're most likely not going to go after, and you will limit yourself, thinking that you'll be rejected or you don't have the abilities to do so so that fear will limit us and that's honestly why it's so important that we have methods of bouncing back because like you said if we do have those coping mechanisms it doesn't hurt as much and you're able to like continue with life it keeps you from being pessimistic all the time it keeps you from sticking yourself in a box rather than thinking outside the box I think it also expands to, like, people. Like, oh, I'm not going to talk to this new person because what if, or I'm not going to make myself seem vulnerable because they're just going to reject me. I was thinking maybe not trying to do something is a form of coping. Like, I don't want to feel that again, so I'm going to self-preserve and not do that. 
You know, it's a form of self-preservation. It is. So it's I don't want to feel that vulnerability. I don't want to feel that sadness but ever again. So unless I'm 100% sure that I'm going to be successful in it, I'm not going to try. But it's a negative way of coping. It's yeah, I agree 100%. Way. Yeah, because then it just prevents your future from happening because you're just kind of sitting down. Like, I'd rather know I tried than to have, like, regret it for not trying. Yeah, and like always happens. asking yourself what if. But yeah, like you're saying, Maria, like it's normal to be taken aback or to feel badly about rejection. It's mm-hmm. normal to have those emotions. I just think we shouldn't let us stop us from continuing. Like, don't let it hold you back. So, like, do you think it's not really normalized though? Like talking about it open. I think if do people like you, you and your friends, do you guys ever talk about what you got rejected from? So <laughs> those are difficult conversations, right? I feel like that's also one reason why people have such a hard time coping with it because it's not really an open discussion. Like because no one says, "Oh, I got rejected from this," or "I tried to." Because yeah, it doesn't make you feel good, and it makes you, it opens yourself up to vulnerability to know that now you know that I wasn't good enough mm-hmm. to but, get that job or to get into that school. Like I don't want to be open about that to other people. But like if everyone de- goes through rejection, you'd be able to kind of lean on one another to help cope with that, or not just that. Like oh, maybe they can give that opportunity like oh you applied here and didn't get in I, that same thing happened to me or i tried this or and give this someone and that. advice or something yeah. or like oh maybe this relationship didn't work out but this this and that or this is what i did you know it's like, i think it depends it's like assuming other people are viewing you negatively so people are judging you or, or it not. makes you less of a person in their eyes mm-hmm. or your image decreases in their eyes because you got rejected from something but i think it just depends on how comfortable you are with yeah it does and i think a lot of it is also in your head like you're thinking other people will view you differently versus them actually viewing you differently Mm -hmm. i actually agree with you on that we should make a rejection an open discussion because rejection has such a negative connotation because we associate rejection with failure yeah so if we stop thinking rejection as a failure then it could be an easier discussion to have with other people so instead like oh yeah, I got rejected from this school, but I'm going to try it this way, or I'm going to do it this way. So it's not a, a way that I failed. It's just a one way that didn't work. Mm-hmm. Thomas Edison. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, most people don't have that conversation, but once in a while I will hear people like talking about things like that. It's kind of refreshing, like, oh, they're so chill. They're just randomly going to talk about this, and like we'll have that conversation, and it's it's not that bad. Yeah, I think I hear it more with people and when they're talking about like school. Yeah, it d- like applying for schools and stuff like that. I don't know, it just normalizes it and kind of humanizes everyone. I think the ultimate worst type of rejection is getting rejected from something when you have other people also depending on your success. Because it's like you failed not only yourself, but everyone else. Who's depending on you and need that. And then just knowing that they also know you got rejected. <laughs> like, it's kind of like, really? <laughs> I mean, again, it goes back to like, if you did everything you can Getting rejected from something, if you didn't do what you could, like, that's when the regret comes in. Yeah, because then you're like, oh, I could have done this, I could have done this, whatever, like. But, like do people <laughs> think, though, that they've done enough? Like, how do you know you've when done do enough? You, you've, I feel like you know. You should know yourself. Yeah. I feel like at some point you have to, like, be aware of yourself. I feel like I would never say I've done enough. I, I'm like, I could have. I could always improve and do more. Like, I, in general, that's how yeah, I, yeah, I am. Yeah, but there are people that say, like, there are that's that type of what ifs. Like, oh, what if I did an extra half an hour or something like that? Versus somebody that knows their heart wasn't in it. Or knows that they were wasting time. Or when they were doing it, they were actually putting effort. You know, that's different. I mean, the thing is, yeah, you could always, always probably do more. Would but like positive you thinking if you think, oh, I just need to change my way or I just didn't put it in my all. Like it's a way to positively cope with rejection. Because like it just, wasn't me. It was my effort. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> what? Uh, only, I, I, I would say it's only positive if you do it to improve yourself mm-hmm. and then you start putting in more effort. But there comes to a certain point where it's like, OK, I did what I can. Sure. If I put in an extra half hour, blah, blah, blah. Would yeah. that have changed anything? You know, when you've done like majority of what you can do and if it still didn't work out didn't and regardless of what people tell you it's like holding yourself accountable you know you know what you're capable of you know how much you went into i think i know there's a sense of reality always coming into play but i always want people to go for their dreams and to keep trying at it because you never know when it might work like i always those people who oh you can't make it into the nba because you're too short and then you go and now you're one of the best point guards. Mm-hmm. You know, like, always those stories, they make me so happy because people don't quit on their dream just because their dream may seem impossible or they've been rejected by everybody and everything. I keep going. 
So just keep moving forward. Just keep Never swimming. Move. Just keep <laughs> swimming. Okay, so thank you so much to everyone for tuning in and listening to this week's episode of To Whom It May Concern. Please subscribe, like, and follow us on social media. We appreciate all the support we've been receiving so far. If you don't already follow us, you can find us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at The Modern Skeps. And please continue to tune in every week with us Tuesday mornings. Keep DMing us, messaging us. We love to hear from you guys. If you have any ideas and you don't have social media, you could email us at modernskeptics at gmail.com. Sincerely, The Modern Skeptics. P.S. Never let success get to your head. Never let failure get to your heart. Thank you.